and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to give you an example of why knowing this table is really really useful. It's also helpful for knowing all other classifications of stars as well. So I've got two stars here, Conifos and Rutilicus, and they're both class G stars. Their distance away in parsecs, this is in parsecs, is Cornifos is 43 uh, parsecs away and Rutilicus is 11. And both have an apparent magnitude, and I'm reminding you of apparent magnitude, that this uh, is the brightness as seen by Earth. And what I want to know is which one of these stars is bigger. So which is bigger? Okay. Now there's only one formula that you know that relates the size of the star to any of the information to do with apparent magnitude or class, so light. And that is Stefan's law, which, just a reminder, is power equals sigma a t to the 4. This is the surface area, so sigma 4 pi r squared t to the 4. Okay. So I know if I can find which one of these stars emits the most power, then I can talk about what's happening here. But wait a minute, temperature has an effect. And this is important. These two stars have the same class. They're class G, which means that their temperature range is between 5,000 and 6,000. So I can say that because they're the same spectral class, that their temperature is approximately the same. So this temperature here is approximately the same for both of them. Which means that if I can work out which one is the brightest star, I can then assume that if the temperature is similar, that the radius would be um, much, much bigger. Okay. And this is why it's important to know that table. If you know the fact that the same class star or they're different classes, you can then make assumption about how the temperature would be affected. So in this case, they both look the same brightness on Earth. So you would assume, first of all, from Earth, they look like they're emitting the same power. But Cornifos is much, much further away. So if I was going to find their absolute magnitude, I'm going to do that for you now using this formula here. So M minus big M is 5 log D over 10. So I'm going to put this information in. So the Carnifos is plus 2.8 minus M 5 log 43 over 10. So 43 divided by 10 log that times by 5 minus 2.8. So M equals minus 0.37. And for Rutilicus, I have plus 2.8 minus M is 5 log 11 over 10. I'm going to have an answer of M equals minus plus 2.6. As you can see, because Cornifos is much, much further away, it's actually much brighter. Its absolute magnitude is much brighter than Rutilicus. And because they are of the same spectral class, their temperature is the same. So this means Cornifos, because it has a much brighter absolute magnitude, must be emitting more power. Which means, if I'm emitting more power, I must be bigger because the temperatures are the same, which means Cornifos must be the bigger star in this situation. So that is an example of knowing about that table will assist you in making decisions about which star is bigger and why. They may then go in to ask about what color would that be? And of course, if it's a class G star, it is a yellow white color, okay? And they may ask other questions like what elements are in it, etc. 
So that is an example of using the, class uh, the star classification chart in a question.